the red heifers, essential for the Third Temple, have quietly arrived in Israel. This development strongly suggests that construction of the Third Temple could start very soon. Can you feel the excitement and anticipation? Get ready because we're about to explore this fascinating topic in depth today. In this video, let's delve into the mystery of these red heifers and what they mean for the future of the Third Temple. According to ancient Hebrew prophets, in the end times, the dispersed people of Israel would return to their promised land and rebuild the temple. As Ezekiel 37.28 puts it, then the nations will know that I the Lord make Israel holy when my sanctuary is among them forever. These remarkable events of the end times are unfolding before our eyes. The prophesied return to Israel and the reconstruction of the third temple are described in the book of Amos where it says, I will bring back my exiled people Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. Amos 9, 14, 15. This passage underscores God's commitment to rejuvenate Israel and enable them to thrive in their own land. Despite doubts from many who attribute Israel's restoration solely to human efforts, Scripture reminds us that God never planned to abandon His people forever. In Isaiah it says, You Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, You are my servant, I have chosen you and have not rejected you. Isaiah 41, 9. This confirms God's unwavering dedication to His chosen people. God's intention has always been to bring the Jewish people back to their land according to His plan, not solely through human efforts. As prophesied by the prophets, Jewish people are returning to the Holy Land from all corners of the world after centuries of exile. Isaiah declares, Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, Do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Isaiah 43, 5, 6. Moreover, initiatives to reconstruct the Third Temple are in progress, spearheaded by organizations such as the Temple Institute and the Temple Mount Faithful Movement. These advancements correspond with the prophecies in Scripture, indicating the unfolding of God's divine plan for His people and the revival of their sacred legacy. But what's the significance of rebuilding the Third Temple? Isaiah 8.18 states, Here am I and the children the Lord has given me. We are signs and symbols in Israel from the Lord Almighty, who dwells on Mount Zion. This verse implies that Isaiah and his children represent indications of God's presence among his people. You might wonder, since the sanctuary was a reflection and a foreshadowing of what exists in heaven, Hebrews 8.5, and Jesus ministers in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle established by the Lord, Hebrews 8.2, why even consider constructing the Holy Temple? The Holy Temple in Jerusalem was more than just a building. It was a sacred space where God's divine presence resided on earth. God's directive in Exodus 25, 8, to construct a sanctuary for me, that I may dwell among them, emphasizes this spiritual dwelling, known in Hebrew as Shachan, which gave rise to the concept of the Shekinah, symbolizing God's presence. Although the term Shekinah isn't found in the original Hebrew Bible, it is used in rabbinic literature and translations to convey the idea of God's divine presence. The prophet Ezekiel saw the divine presence leaving the temple, Ezekiel 10, 18, 19, but he also had a vision of rebuilding a permanent home for God on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Ezekiel vividly described how the glory of the Lord entered the temple through the gate facing east and proclaimed, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, and the place where I will set my feet. This is where I will dwell among the Israelites forever. Ezekiel 43, 4, 7. Rambam, or Rabbi Moses Maimonides, a medieval Jewish philosopher and Torah scholar, stressed the timeless importance of the temple. In his work, Hilkos Bais Habira, or The Laws of God's Chosen House, Rambam outlined the temple's dual roles, Firstly, it was a place where God's presence was tangibly felt, particularly above the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, as described in Exodus 25, 22. God said, There, above the cover between the two cherubim that are over the Ark of the Testimony, I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites. Secondly, 
the temple was crucial for offering required sacrifices. However, since the destruction of the second temple in AD 70, the Jewish people have been unable to offer these sacrifices. This has had profound effects, as 202 out of the 613 mitzvot commandments in the Torah cannot be fulfilled without a temple. As explained by the Temple Institute, this has led Jewish worship to focus on local synagogues and Torah study. Instead of animal sacrifices, prayer, repentance and charity have become central. While some believe that animal sacrifices have ended permanently, biblical prophecy suggests otherwise. In Ezekiel 42.13, the prophet Ezekiel envisions a future temple where priests will resume offering prescribed sacrifices. This vision raises an important question for the Jewish community and all believers in Yeshua, Jesus. Will this next temple, often called the third temple, be the one described by Ezekiel where the divine presence will dwell once more? Or will a different temple house some other presence? The red hifa ritual, mandated by the Old Testament's Book of Numbers, chapter 19, holds significant importance in the context of the third temple. This ritual symbolized the Israelites' purification from uncleanness, requiring the ashes of a red hifa for the temple's purification rites. Its scarcity made the appearance of a red hifa a momentous event, often interpreted as a sign of the imminent construction of the third temple and the return of Christ. According to Jewish tradition, nine red heifers were sacrificed from the time of Moses up to the Second Temple's destruction, after which no red heifers were found. Rabbi Maimonides, a respected Jewish scholar, taught that the tenth red heifer would be sacrificed by the Messiah himself. In a recent development, the Temple Institute, dedicated to rebuilding the Third Temple, announced the arrival of five flawless red heifers from Texas to Israel. This event has been perceived by many as the fulfillment of prophecy and a significant step towards the temple's reconstruction. The selection of the red hypha was meticulous, requiring it to be unblemished, never having borne a yoke. The sacrifice itself was unique, as it involved a female animal, was conducted outside the tabernacle's entrance, and was the only offering where the animal's color was specifically prescribed. In Numbers 19, 2, the process of slaughtering a red heifer is detailed. The ritual was conducted by Eliezer the priest outside the Israelite camp. First, the hypha was killed, and then Eliezer sprinkled some of its blood toward the front of the tabernacle seven times. Next, he oversaw the burning of the hypha's carcass, which included adding cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet wool to the fire. The ashes from this process were collected and stored in a clean place outside the camp. These ashes were later used in a purification ceremony for cleansing from sin. The law explained how to use ashes to purify anyone who had contact with the dead body. They were supposed to cleanse themselves with water mixed with these ashes on the third and seventh days after being around death. This law about the red heifer hinted at Jesus' sacrifice for the sins of believers. Jesus, like the red heifer, was perfect and without any faults. He was sacrificed outside the city, similar to how the red heifer was handled, Hebrews 13.12. Just as the ashes of the red heifer purified people from the effects of death, Jesus' sacrifice saves believers from the punishment and decay of death. The red heifer ceremony as described in the Mosaic Law was quite simple. However, Judaism later added many additional rules and criteria. According to Talmudic tradition, details like the kind of rope used to tie the red heifer, the direction it faced during slaughter, the words spoken by the priest, the necessity of wearing sandals during the ritual, and more were specified. Rabbinic regulations also listed various reasons for disqualifying a red heifer, such as if it had been ridden or leaned on, if a garment had been placed over it, if a bird had rested on it, or if it had two black or white hairs, among other conditions not mentioned in the Bible. In the futurist view of the end times, it is believed that Jerusalem will have a third temple, Jesus predicted that a temple would be desecrated during a period called the Tribulation, suggesting that a temple must exist for such an event to happen. Matthew 24, 15, CF 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. According to Jewish law, if the people responsible for dedicating the end times temple follow tradition, they will need the ashes of a red heifer mixed with water for ceremonial cleansing. The discovery of a flawless red heifer in Israel could be seen as another step toward fulfilling biblical prophecy. 
The Bible contrasts the red heifer ceremony with the sacrifice of Christ, highlighting the power of Christ's sacrifice. In Hebrews 9.13, 14 it says, The ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God? Recently, five perfectly red heifers arrived in Israel from a ranch in Texas. These heifers play a crucial role in Jewish purification rituals, particularly for those who have come into contact with a dead body. According to Jewish law, these heifers must be under one year old, entirely red and free of blemishes to be considered suitable for use in creating the ashes required for purification rituals. This development is significant as it aligns with preparations for the construction of the Third Temple in Jerusalem by the Temple Institute. This level of purification is vital for enabling the Kohanim priests to carry out their duties in a future temple. Upon their arrival, the prized cattle were taken to Hayah, where they will undergo a minimum seven-day quarantine as per Israel Veterinary Authority regulations. Following the quarantine, they will be moved to two separate locations in Israel, one of which will eventually be open to the public. The heifers will be well cared for and nourished at these locations until they reach three years old. At that point, they will be slaughtered and turned into the required ashes. The heifers were brought to Israel with the help of the Bone Israel Organization, which comprises both Jewish and Christian members. Byron Stinson, a Texas rancher who also serves as a fundraiser and advisor for the organization, raised the cattle. Upon their arrival, a welcoming ceremony was held at Ben Gurion Airport. The ceremony was attended by officials from the Temple Institute, including Rabbi Chaim Richman, Rabbi Zivi Mamo, Rabbi Yisrael Ariel, and Rabbi Azaria Ariel, as well as Stinson and Netanel Isaac, the Director General of the Jerusalem and Heritage Ministry. Stinson shared, I didn't plan on becoming an expert in finding red heifers, but now I'm likely the best in Texas. He spoke about his dedication to fulfilling the biblical commandment and recognized his part in bringing the red heifers to Israel for purification. Stinson highlighted the importance of the red heifer in constructing the temple, likening it to a key that unlocks its purpose. As a devout Christian, he felt deeply connected to this commandment and started breeding cattle with the specific traits needed for a red heifer. Political and religious obstacles hinder the construction of the Third Temple, facing a myriad of challenges from both spheres. At the heart of these obstacles lies the Temple Mount, a sacred site in Jerusalem revered by Judaism, Christianity, and Islam alike. It is believed to be the original location of previous temples. However, the presence of significant Islamic structures such as the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, complicates matters. The Temple Mount has become a focal point of tension in the Arab-Israeli conflict, with access restrictions for Palestinian Muslims and Israeli excavations in the vicinity being particularly contentious. The fate of this holy site is a matter of great concern for Muslims, because discussions about the Third Temple encompass complex religious, political and cultural factors the Temple Mount becomes a sensitive and challenging aspect of any plans to build the Third Temple. The Antichrist plays a crucial role in the prophetic writings of both the Book of Daniel and the New Testament. A rebuilt temple in the end times is also central to these prophecies. Both Daniel and Jesus predict the defilement of this Third Temple by the Antichrist before the true Messiah's return, calling this spiritual contamination within the Temple the Abomination of Desolation. Jesus emphasizes the importance of understanding this concept in Matthew 24, 15, saying, The abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. These ideas align with Daniel's prophecies in Daniel 9.27, 11.31, and 12.11. Daniel's prophecy also suggests that the Messiah will be cut off before the temple's destruction, as stated in Daniel 9.26. After the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing, and the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Together, these prophecies provide a detailed picture of the events surrounding the third temple, the Antichrist, and the ultimate return of the true Messiah. The prediction came true in AD 70 when the temple was destroyed, just 40 years after Jesus was crucified. 
by closely studying different prophecies about the end times, it's believed that a leader, often associated with the Antichrist, will emerge according to Daniel's writings. Daniel mentions that this leader will make a peace agreement for seven years, but will violate it halfway through. In simpler terms, it says that a leader, referred to as the prince, will establish a strong agreement with many people for a period of seven years. However, halfway through this time, he will stop certain religious rituals and offerings. Then someone will bring something abominable into the sacred place, possibly an idol, leading to desolation or destruction. This will continue until the appointed time for punishment is fulfilled. Furthermore, according to the teachings of 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, the Antichrist will boldly claim to be God. This scripture suggests that he will oppose all that is considered divine, positioning himself above every deity or form of worship, even going as far as declaring himself as God within a sacred place. These prophetic insights offer detailed understanding of the Antichrist's character and deeds during the end times. In parallel, efforts are underway by prominent Jewish groups such as the Temple Institute and the Temple Mount and Eretz Israel Faithful Movement to prepare for the construction of the Third Temple and the reinstatement of sacrificial rituals. Alongside these organizations, other groups have proposed their own approaches. One suggests setting up a tent resembling the ancient tabernacle on the mount while another advocates for building a synagogue in a specific area of the platform. Kim Richmond, the director of the Temple Institute, highlights the practical side of building the temple, stressing the religious duty to do so, as mentioned in Exodus 25.8. He also emphasizes the importance for Jews to follow all 613 mitzvot, including those that require a temple. When discussing the significance of the Third Temple, he shares deep beliefs about its spiritual and global significance. He believes the Temple will shine as a symbol of divine light, marking the return of God's presence to the world after it was lost with the Temple Mount. Moreover, he sees the Temple as a uniting force, bringing together all of creation and allowing humanity to establish a direct and vibrant connection with God, thus enabling individuals to fulfill their potential. However, although these aspirations are deeply meaningful, insights from Daniel 9-11 and the Brit Chadasha offer a different perspective on the temple's role in prophetic events. Nevertheless, preparations for the third temple continue. Ritual garments and sacred vessels have already been carefully crafted, including the famous golden menorah and Levitical musical instruments such as silver trumpets, lyres and harps meant for worship similar to that of King David over 3,000 years ago. 1 Chronicles 23.5 The Temple Institute School is involved in a unique project, training certified Kohanim who are DNA-tested descendants of the High Priest Aaron to fulfill the sacred duties within the Temple. This thorough training ensures that individuals with the proper lineage and qualifications are ready to perform the intricate rituals and responsibilities as prescribed by tradition. Moreover, a crucial aspect of the preparations for Temple service involves breeding the Red Haifa in Israel. This specific breed of Haifa is designated for sacrifice in a ritual purification process essential for priests and sacred vessels. Through this purification they become ritually clean and are thereby able to enter the holiest of holy areas, considered the most sacred space on earth according to Jewish tradition. What are your thoughts on the Red Haifa's arrival in Israel? Leave a comment below and subscribe for more updates.